Hey guys, it's Will. I'm going to go through the markets as usual. And uh, if we, I look at the NASDAQ here, and uh, we had a break of this sort of downtrend here, this pullback. Um, we've crossed that through. So that would have been, and down here you see the crossover on the per price percent oscillator, momentum. And we're above zero here. So, um, you know, you could have bought right when it broke here a couple of days ago on the 24th. Um, and right now we're at um, the high, a previous high. So sometimes that balances off. It's a resistance sort of thing. Um, so, but that looks, that's looking pretty strong. One nice thing with TC2000 is if you click on this um, component watch list and sort, say by change, this is a couple of nice things is right now I can see stocks in the pre-market, like actual prices being um, sold and, and bought in the pre-market. So if you look at, you see in, NVIDIA and... Uh, <clears throat> Zilinx here and microchip semiconductors obviously so when you see you can see stocks and sort of get a sense of the um, some biotech sort of the obviously Tesla of the of the sectors that you might want to look at uh, specialty retail so if you want to get a trial of a uh, free trial of TC2000 check out the link below and you can get um, $25 off your purchase. Um, it helps the channel. Doesn't cost you anything to anything extra to help me out. But the reason I'm promoting it, this product is I love it and I use it. So uh, you know I used to use a lot of free stuff, but now I'm I'm using this. I've got a lot of scans and watch lists in here and custom formulas and stuff like that. Um, anyway, Nasdaq's looking good. From the chart perspective, S and P as well is at a new high. It's up here. Some people don't like buying on breakouts. You know, it's already been up quite a few days. So if you're patient, you can wait for like a pullback a bit and then buy a, a lower amount. But um, that is a sign of strength when you break through this sort of double top thing. And now you've and you've crossed over. So everything looks pretty good for for that as well. Dow and the same thing. Momentum's up, crossed over. Um, you're almost at a new high, so sometimes that can bounce off that. But you're, you know, you're above the moving averages, and uh, they had a recovery here. Um, IWM was always been the weakest of it. We had this breakout a while back after a long, huge, flat period, and then pull back quite a bit. So when it comes up here, it bounces usually off one of the moving averages. So now we create this trend line here, and then we did break it. But you've got the 50-day there, so it has to get through the 50-day. Um, but obviously, there seems to be a lot of resistance from the past in terms of this churning up period. But um, and and also, like you look at when it crosses over, it's quite a bit below zero. So crosses over can be entry points. Crossovers can be um, you know entry points, but if they're down here, it's a bit riskier in a sense that there's uh, it's from a lower momentum. But those ones do have strong pullbacks I mean uh, recoveries a lot of times but you see where the strong sections are you have this above zero high momentum period even when it's coming back down it's still going up because you know you're so much above zero and then you see here how you know you get these waffly periods during the um, you know below this zero line I, again here was a strong period above the 50 and above the zero of the moment of a price percent oscillator so that's the ideal scenario. Like sometimes you want to buy, you know, you see this huge pullback and you want to get when it starts to break and that can, that can work, but it is, um, you know, under a lower momentum section area. Um, with the volatility now, there's been a lot of like start out really great days in the morning and then sort of sells off over time. But, and the other thing that's, I forgot to mention with these indices is that the volume isn't great. Um, you have this decline here. So like people are off for Christmas and stuff and there's lower volume so that can move the price more. Um, so you can see here, um, it doesn't, it's not a hundred percent, you know, indicator, but sometimes when you do see a break, you'd like to see more volume. You don't always get that, but this is a market, you know, obviously decrease and same for other, other ones here. You see how, 
the, the volume has decreased, but nothing, you know, it's still within this general range, but it's below the, um, the average here. Same thing with the Dow. So that's the only, one of my concerns is that there's, there's lower volume during this period. Um, from that, you can look at um, ETFs or sectors to find like the strong sectors because you don't want to just like for me, the, the NASDAQ is the best over time, the longest term. It might fall out of favor at periods of time like growth or whatever, but um, historically it's it's beaten that even the S&P 500. So um, I look at the sectors, but most of them don't do well against the the NASDAQ over time. So there might be periods like months or weeks that you can trade or, or buy some other sectors, but you got to be careful, you know, when they start to turn back down. Um, lost my mic there for a second. Um, so if we look at uh, sectors, um, Meta is like kind of the metaphor stuff. You know, we have a crossover. It's kind of below the zero line and we're right at the 50. So, you know, it's probably, we're going to see what happens at the 50. Um, but, you know, if it breaks through there, then it would be probably good. But some of these don't last, like you see here, it came up and back down. So you're not going to get every single trade. Like if you bought down here, you, had a, you could trade it here, make four or 5%. That's not huge. And then it would curl down. You'd, you'd probably sell there buy back in. If you want to buy in here, it's, it's, you know, below zero and it's below the 50. In this case, it just went right through. Um, you know, so it's not going to be hundred percent. You have to decide when these crossovers happen, if you want to get in. Um, the crossovers also have a stochastic. You see it's an oversold and it starts to come up like this. It'll get up into a higher area of oversold stochastics, but still go up. So you don't just sell when it gets up here, but you can see it here. Um, it started to go up, came back down and it went even lower. So these two stochastics are the same, but it's a much lower price on this one. But now you see the crossover again. So some people use the crossover stochastics as well, but of course, um, you know, that's a riskier situation and you don't want to just focus on that one indicator, but We'll see what happens. Um, but the one that um, does generally better than the market is um, the uh, semiconductors. It does better than the NASDAQ. So within the NASDAQ, there's sectors. And this is one that does better. So um, you have to look at the relative strength is what I'm getting at. I've got a... Um, a little indicator here, which shows the relative strength versus the NASDAQ. This is the Canadian NASDAQ. So if I change that to, um, just because I'm using a, I'm looking at a US stock right now, I'll use the NASDAQ. So you can see from here, it's right, you know, you have this increase in the um, relative strength. So that correlates with this rise here. So if that continues, you know, you have a strong relative strength of the, um, of the chips. So you don't want to just buy a, necessarily a sector that has a good chart like this. You want to look at like this type of um, crossovers and stuff like that. You want to um, look at the relative strength and make sure, you know, that you're beating the NASDAQ because you generally um, don't want to buy things that aren't doing as well as the NASDAQ, even if it's going up, it might not go up as much as it could, other things. So in that one case, even though I love TC2000, I have to go to um, trading view. And um, I use trading view mostly for cryptos, which I should do videos, more videos on. But I've got this one, that's the thing, I, I have a, um, a membership, because I wanted to have many different watch lists and it's very important because some of these are relative strength and some of these are crypto and crypto relative strength to Bitcoin. So I have a whole bunch of different charts and I have um, like a screener. But if you want to get um, a membership to TradingView and not just use the free stuff so that you can get all these trading, you can get the, um, you can create multiple 
um, watch lists and also alerts and stuff like that, check out the link in the, I have another link for TradingView in there as well. I ended up paying for that too, because it has, um, the ratio charts are really nice like this. And also the, uh, you know, getting alerts um, on some of the crypto stuff mostly. Because I have alerts for stocks, but for um, crypto, like, you know, it goes 24 seven. So alerts are, you know, having a, a bunch of alerts would be, is helpful. So that's about it. Um, I'll talk to you guys in the next video.